I've had several people call and ask me and they say, hey, I want to add air blow to my machine, an older machine that doesn't have air blow. So I put together this little cable and I've sold one or two of these people who custom asked for it. And I thought, all right, let's do a video and explain how it functions. People who want to have like a automatic call it closure, vice, cl vice closure, robot signal. What What is standard on mills and lathes is they have optional output relays where you can fire them with an M code to open or close included with a finish signal. Except for tool room machine, the early tool room machines, they took all the relays off. Just pulled them out or like gone, gone. They're not on the I.O. board. Really? Yeah. So they could sell you a new I.O. board because they're trying to keep the price down. Let me look just a second. I think I have one of those. Oh, yeah. Look, look, look. I didn't even know that. Probably the one that belongs in the lathe. TL. Yeah, look. They're totally missing. Yeah, they this, gave you two. They gave you two. Because <laughs> they wanted to sell you a whole new I.O. board. Or maybe they use these for something. I don't know. The turret. I don't think so. The Well, well, I've seen them with none here. I Yeah, this is the only this style board. You can see this has some tool changer stuff, but it doesn't have a lot of the extra, you know, three spindle cool. Sure it's for a tool room machine. Yeah, a TL or a TM and, or, yeah. or a mini mill. The early TL or TM. I mean, it makes sense if you're going to build a circuit board for a cheaper machine that you don't need to populate it with all the components. Everything, yeah, exactly. So I guess what I just learned is if you have a tool room machine that's older, you may not have these relays. They may not even be on the board. We could put them on the board and make it work because even originally it didn't come with a coolant pump. Yeah, yeah. but it but it did. But it had the it had the stuff for it, but it didn't have the cables uh, it didn't have the power that fed here for the three right. phase. So we made a kit. This is 20 years ago or whatever. We made the kit with all the cables and the plug on the outside of the machine and everything. If you're trying to add, uh, say, a spindle air blow, an external... Oh, this is one that would work. Guys who want to have a Harbor Freight pressure washer for high-pressure coolant. They hook up a Harbor Freight pressure washer to their coolant tank and really high-pressure coolant through the spindle. Interesting. <laughs> so... If if you want to turn on something externally from your machine, there are four relays that you can command from your machine. Now, you've got some codes to turn them on and turn them off, and there's a normally open, a normally closed, and a common. One other thing, though. If they have probing, they have a couple probing. of these are used up for the probing. It depends on the revision of I.O. board. Right. But Older machines. Older machines, if you have probing, a couple of these are going to be used to switch the skip input signal from the table probe to the spindle probe. And also to switch the... Um, the power. The probe to the... To enable. The probe. By default, it's the tool setter. And then when they enable they the spindle probe, they switch the input and they turn on the on signal to tell the spindle probe to turn on. So that's a good point. You might not have all of them. So the other thing that these were used for was for external rotary table finish signals. They still do. That. They still do that. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you use that separate single axis control box. Yes. Um, the finish signal goes through. The fin Actually, no, this triggers it. This triggers it. So the, the finish signal comes in the way you, somewhere here. The way that, that you confirm that an external task has been done is that the machine fires an M code for one of these. It sends a signal to the external, the robot, to the rotary table, to the pump, to whatever you want. And if you want the machine to wait until the process externally getting done finishes to move to the next line of code, it's called an M finish signal. It's in here. Yeah, it's on here. Let's see. M fin. Remote unclamp spigot. Well, this board is going to be different oh, right here. Right P22. Here. P this is P10 on this board. Well, these are different revision boards. Let's talk really quick. We did an, a brand new install with the HFO years ago, and they wanted to have two rotary tables, but there was only one finish signal. And they wanted to have one rotary table. Was that table. the tilting rotary table, or was it a double rotary table? I think it was a double rotary table on a pallet changer machine. And they wanted to have... The one rotary table inside the machine running while you were setting up on the other, but it only had one finish signal. Yeah, I think we ran it through another relay or something so that the finish signal would only happen. Oh, uh, I don't remember that. I, I just remember you talking about it, and it was really tricky because... We put another relay in to turn the 
turn which switch which signal, the finish signal went there. That, yeah, you could do that. Exactly like what we're talking about. So to f turn these on, to activate them, let's see. Sure. Optional user M function with M fin. M21 through M28. So 21, 22, 23. I think there are extras because you can have an external... Uh, I think you can plug it into one of these extra pins and have another addition. Second I, a, multi, they called it multiple, I don't know what they call it, additional M function. Yeah. The little board, I think it had another eight relays or something, or four relays on it. So if you're to turn on this with the M21 through 28, what's going to happen is the machine's going to turn on a relay and it's going to wait to advance to the next line of code until the M finish signal closes. So this is isolated. It just closes these contacts. But over here, it sends voltage out. It needs to bring that voltage back, make that M finish signal a one in the diagnostics page before and it will go. Drop out that relay and you can move on to the. So next. that's the one way to do that. Now, the other way to do that is if you want to set optional M user codes, you can also just tell it turn on and don't look for a finish signal. And turn off. And turn off. That's right. You've got to be able to program it on. There should be an. I don't have. And I think memorized. what it does is it sets them with one and then it turns them off with another. And so yeah, you it can does. say I leave think it on M21 or leave it off. I think M21 turns it on unless you change a parameter to say you want to use the finish signal. Yes. So M21 will turn this. Con and looks for the finish signal. M50. No, yeah. M21. Yeah. You can't look right here. Set output user M codes and then clear optional user M codes. So M51 through 58 and M61 through 68. Okay. So. M21 through 28, turn it on looking for the finish signal. And then M51 through 58, turn it on. And M61 through 68, turn it turn off. Turn it off. Okay. So you're going to, if you yeah, want the 50, finish 50, signal. M50, turn it on. M60, turn it off. So let's say you want to add a simple air blast to your machine. I put together this wire kit because a few people have asked me for it. Most machinist guys are not someone who's going to figure out exactly how to correctly wire it. Now, this is simple. You could build it yourself if you're electrically savvy. You're going to connect it into an MFIN. What's going to happen on this other end is this is going to come over and it's going to plug into the power distribution card. It's going to get 110 volts here on this power distribution card. Then on the other side of here, these cables are long enough so you could run this solenoid outside your machine. You could plug it in here. And these are all standard Haas plugs, so this solenoid would work anywhere else on a Haas and on this plug. When you run M51, this is going to turn off. When you run M61, this is going to turn off. This is really simple. You could move it to M52 or 53 or 54. But this would be a simple way if you wanted to add an air blow, if you wanted to add an external pump. Now, this relay is what they call a dry contact. And if we look, we've got common, normally open, and normally closed. And depending on if you're running like a robot or running something else, you may want the normally closed versus the normally open. But there's no voltage here. None. That's why... On this plug here, I'm getting 120 volts from this. now, And it's fused over there. And it's fused. Board, so. you got to be careful. People have bought these that are DC 24 volts, and then they try to plug them into these, and they don't work. And the guy's like, well, this relay says 12 volts. No, no. That's the coil of the relay. Yep, not the contact. So if you wanted to run DC 24 volts or 12 through these contacts, you could. You would just need to hook up this to a DC power supply, which there's DC voltage on this board. If you have a newer power distribution card, you're going to want this style of plug, plug it into here. This is a fused 110, 120 volt AC. If you have an older board, you're going to have the same 110 volts on a different style plug. So this cable kit you're going to need is different depending on if you have this newer style power distribution card or this older one. Same thing, it's an older IO board. It doesn't have these nice plugs. So you're going to have to actually wire this into here to run an external accessory, I'm going to call it, through the normally open and the common. So this is really for kind of newer machines. But before you look at doing this, you need to think, am I going to run something that's AC or DC? Or does the thing I'm running have power? If you can do it on the Haas, just get 110. Then everything's here. Yeah. Then, then get the coil, it's 110. We've made this cable kit for sale on our website for pretty inexpensively. You plug it in, you plug it in. You can buy the solenoid from us. It's it's going to work. If you want to wire in, say, a three-phase motor, which I, people have asked me about that, it's a bit trickier. You need to decide on the contactor, which is going to run my motor. Do I want 12 volts DC? Do I want 24 volts AC? Do I want 110, 220? This relay, 
it will handle up to 250 volts AC. So you could run the coil voltage. It's not worth it if you burn the points up on those contacts. Yeah, but AC is better than DC. D well, DC points one burn up put... faster because it's direct current jumping across. Yeah, I agree. Now, these you can't replace, but if I go grab a newer I I.O. board, you can actually... Don't be cheap. Buy a contactor. Well, no, no, no. I, I'm not saying... Hold on. For just running a coil on a motor starter is fine, but don't run the motor no, no. through those relays. Uh, I think... Uh, Wow. Look at this. Dave makes a good point. All of the I.O. boards I just looked at, these are all soldered in. Those are soldered in. It's the tool changer relays that are replaceable. Right, exactly. And, and guess what? You know why they're replaceable? Because they run DC motor current through them and they, have, they wear out. I, I would not recommend running DC through these relays. No, I mean for a coil. For a coil. Yeah, but okay. What but if even so, if you're opening and closing that coil all day long, back and forth. You're going to be unsoldering this and replacing yeah. this, especially if it's high cycle time. What I was saying, if you're going to run a motor contact or a three phase or single phase, you could run a 220 volt so coil. But he ran a motor through that one. <laughs> yeah, he <they> did. <laughs> Don't do that. You could run, and I've done this. You could grab 200 volts AC from the transformer, yeah. run it through the dry contact here and have fuse it and have it run the motor contactor. Yeah, the motor contactor. The motor contactor, not, not, the, not motor. the motor. No, you couldn't. You'd have to run two, and these are not rated for Well, this. you could run, there's three of them, so you could put three phase through those three relays, but they won't last. Sounds like you've seen seen a lot of crazy stuff. Well, I've seen that. I didn't, I didn't notice that. Don't run high current, high voltage, our recommendation or is DC through these. So if you're going to try to hook up an external coolant pump or something, run the coil voltage for your contactor and make sure you through overload these. it. These are Use not it. for any kind of load. Nope. Nope. They're just for signal stuff. Don't blow up your tool changer motor either. This is really common. Wow. Look, <laughs> not only did it blow, it spewed uh, solder all over the edge here. I bet that was the bang or yeah. pop. You can see on the back side, because it sits vertically, things got so hot, the solder flowed down. Doesn't look like it burned everything up in there. <laughs> no. That's 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 quite the blow up. That's the overview of our opinion and and what we've seen. If you want to run external options, turn things on and off on your machine, this cable kit or some other ones for older machines, call us. We've had it. It's simple, it's easy. If you know how to do it, build it yourself. Um, wire it in, make sure you have a fused voltage and run your accessory, whatever that is. But you may have to buy a hundred of those connectors. Yeah. Yeah. The, and crimp them and buy the crimping tool. Some things are not worth the time. Yeah. So I agree. that's the overview. If you need relays for your IO board or, or you have questions about circuit boards, check out more of our videos.